Hello, welcome to DSEI 2017 here at Excel London. The event this year is set to be the biggest and best yet, with 1,600 exhibitors, 42 international pavilions, nearly 300 international speakers, including around 13 keynotes, seven warships alongside in the dock from the Belgians, Ireland and the UK, around six half a dozen helicopters out at the East Terrace, which also tonight on the first day will be having the uh, SAFA opening night reception. The speaker programme today is one of the best. The event is set to open as is usual for DCI with the first Sea Lord, following his announcements yesterday at the opening strategic conference that we held here on day zero. Next, after first Sea Lord, we will also have keynotes from the head of the EDA, the Secretary of State for International Trade, Dr Liam Fox, followed last uh, today by a keynote from General Sir Chris Deverell from the Commander of Joint Force Command. So it's said to be a very interesting day. If you get a chance, please pop by the Waterborne demonstrations that will be happening twice out on the docks at the East Terrace. Also happening in the North Hall in the Medical Innovation Zone are a number of displays from Defence Medical Services, including the launch of their new Citizen Aid app. Lots to see. Please have a look at the event guide. The visitor portal is up to date with any information that you've got. Have a productive DSCI and I look forward to seeing you later in the week. Hello, I'm Richard Thomas, an editor at Shepherd Media. We are with DSCI TV. We'll be here throughout the week at the Excel Centre in London. It's day zero of DSCI, and that means it's time for the strategic conferences. It's a range of presentations and discussions uh, covering land, sea, and air. We've just sat in on the first keynote speech, which was delivered by uh, Sir Michael Fallon, the Secretary of State for Defence, who outlined a few key strategies in the naval sector, particularly in light of the release of the National Shipbuilding Strategy. Uh, we also learnt that uh, HMS Argyle, which is docked outside, will deploy to Southeast Asia in 2018. The reason we're holding this event here again today is because the threats that we, our allies, and our navies in particular, are facing are growing in intensity. It's hard to believe that it's only been two years since the last year's year. In that time, we've seen a new president take occupancy of the White House. We've seen the decision of the British people to leave the European Union. We've had two elections several reshuffles, but all the while the waves of danger around the globe have continued to rise. The question we've had to ask ourselves in government is how can we maintain and grow our operational flexibility? And the simplest answer of all is by having more ships. And that is why for the first time in a generation, we are laying the foundations to grow the Royal Navy fleet. The Joint Forces Command is one of the four commands in defence, uh, the others being the Royal Navy, the Army and the Royal Air Force. About 23,000 people, budget of about four billion a year. And our job is to provide advantage for the Joint Force. And we do that by helping the Joint Force uh, connect, understand, decide and act, and also by delivering efficiency and service improvement. DSCI is, is always important for the MD as a whole because it provides us a great opportunity to understand the marketplace, what is industry a able to provide, and, and a chance also for us to describe to industry what our requirements are and to have a conversation. 
So this year, JFC's particular focus is on innovation. We're very keen to uh, attract industry attention to our uh, J-Hub, which is our innovation unit in the Joint Forces Command, and to sponsor a conversation around what I'm calling MilTech, uh, a military equivalent of, of FinTech, which is all about big data analytics, autonomy, machine learning, um, behavioral sciences, and the like, which, which is a technology really, or a series of technologies that so far, defense hasn't really grasped. Joint Forces Command, I think it's only been around since 2012, but it's more and more established in the firmament of defense. I think we, are, we have a strategy, clear strategy, and um, we have a plan to deliver joint force advantage. And uh, I intend to do that during the remainder of my time. There's a double importance. There's the obvious importance from the point of view of prosperity, jobs, and uh, international trade. But the primary importance of the defence industry is in keeping us strong and safe by equipping our armed forces with the best possible kit for the hazards that they face operationally. Recently, we took a decision to build four successor submarines to carry the Trident ballistic missiles and the nuclear deterrent. And it was quite a revelation to see when a map was produced showing the hundreds and thousands of jobs all over the country that would be involved in this huge project over decades. And that, in a sense, shows you uh, the reach and the footprint uh, which a major defence project has in terms of employment and skills. And we never want to get into a situation that we have been in in the past where there have been gaps in, for example, submarine production and skills have been lost that have had to be rediscovered and reinvented. DSEI is a central marketplace. It has, and this is important, safety checks in place to make sure that standards are upheld when people wish to buy lethal equipment from the United Kingdom. It is a, a, a window, a shop window, for the world to be able to see what British industry can produce so that countries are well equipped to defend themselves and in an era where security is more uncertain and less predictable than it has been for a considerable period, it is only right and proper that countries want to defend themselves with the best equipment available and DSEI enables them to do that. So DSEI is a really important opportunity for us to showcase our defence medical capabilities uh, to our allies internationally and to demonstrate that we really are at the cutting edge of innovation in both combat casualty care and military medicine. So there are two key themes that we're showing in our medical innovation zone this year in, in DSEI. Firstly, we're showing our defence healthcare engagement, what we've achieved uh, in the last couple of years since DSEI 15, and what we're currently uh, working with international allies. Also, uh, at the national resilience level, we'll be demonstrating citizen aid, uh, where we will have some playlets that show in real time how we can improve public resilience uh, to uh, terrorist events, how to deal with multiple casualties from shooting, stabbing and bombing. And alongside this, we'll also have our very popular combat casualty care uh, capability demonstration, showing how we treat the seriously injured from point of wounding all the way through to the field hospital and including a new surgical simulator. So the day before the exhibition, we're actually running two conferences, Trauma Innovation and uh, International Military Nursing. So in the Trauma Innovation, we'll be looking uh, at uh, far forward capabilities and really thinking outside the box in terms of how we deal with casualties in the future where the evacuation chain may be delayed. And in the nursing conference, we're looking at uh, how multidisciplinary approach to care uh, is driving forward the standards. And what we've had the opportunity to do with DSEI is to exploit the infrastructure and give our nurses a voice for an international conference too, because they are one of our largest clinical cadres and contribute hugely to our capability.
So the theme for trauma innovation uh, this year is disruptive innovation, disruptive thinking. How can we think in a completely different way to transform the way that we deliver military medicine in the future? And from the nursing conference perspective, our theme is multidisciplinary working, how we can integrate best to improve the care of our patients for the future. So we're hoping to engage very widely with our international partners. We think our trauma innovation and nursing conferences will appeal widely to our clinical allies and our exhibition again is showing the very best of what we do and we hope to get as many of the international delegations come and see us as possible. The defence industry is very, very important to the UK economy because not only are we a world leader, but of course we have a very good reputation throughout the world and so therefore people are buying so we are able to not only provide our own but also provide for export and it's extremely important that we keep up that reputation and that means making sure that government gives clear direction in terms of research and development, gives certainty to the industry so that we can then make sure we are developing the necessary skills base. It's got a very, very important role in driving the jobs and skills agenda, making sure that we're bringing on new generations of uh, workers who are able to take on the new technologies of the future. I think what we are seeing now is an exponential expansion of the different types of technology that we need to be expert in. And certainly, if you're not at the cutting edge, we would soon lose the leading role that we have in the world. It's very important that we do really push forward on that skills agenda and make sure that there is the government support necessary um, where it's needed. The SEI is vital to the UK's defence industry because it's very important to have a united voice, it's very important to have a body which can speak very clearly to government, it's very important to have a body which communicates between the different sectors and brings together people who might naturally be commercial rivals. So I think it's extremely important that we have that voice we have that focus and we have that very clear leadership from DSEI in terms of promoting all the very clear benefits that that defence industry can bring to our country. I certainly am looking forward to attending DSEI this year. Well in one of the most iconic areas of London along the Docklands with of course Canary Wharf behind us here, DSEI is one of the most significant and important defence exhibitions and conferences in the world today. You only need to go inside the exhibition halls to see representation from all four corners. From the conferences we sat through this morning and this afternoon, uh, outside of the maritime and the naval topics that were discussed, the land and air presentations seem to delve into the role and the impact that unmanned technology and autonomy will have in the balance of manned, unmanned teaming for their platforms. Outside of the buildings, in the rotary area, we've got representation from the US with three US Army helicopters and the UK as well. We have two Merlins and a Wildcat, of course, based on the Argyle. For the naval buffs, we have a row of ships lined alongside the dock here with representation from the UK, of course, from Belgium and from Ireland. We're with the SCI TV. We will bring you all the news and developments throughout the week. We hope you have a good show.